On my last video, Jose asked about ClipSkip, how do you install it and what it's used for. Today, we're going to take a look at that. Shout out to Jose for the comment and Vinci, I see you there too, buddy. <laughs> so first, let's look at how to install ClipSkip. Now, if you quickly look at the top here, I also have a drop down for VAE files. So first go into your settings. I'm going to make this much bigger on the browser so that you guys could see it properly and then scroll down until you see user interface. Let's click on that. Scroll down once again until we get to quick settings list. But as you can see, I've got a section here for my checkpoint models and my VAEs. So all you really have to do is click on this area, type in clip, and then you'll see this option clip stop at last layers. We're going to select that. Now there's a whole myriad of things here that you can install. We'll get into that in another video, but just so that you know, and you want to mess around with these, you can load these. It's really easy. Just double check that you have it here. And then we're going to scroll to the top, apply settings. You'll see here it says one settings change in quick settings list and then simply click on reload UI. Now best practice is to shut down everything and restart automatic 1111 once again. Now once you've restarted automatic 1111 you'll notice at the top we now have a slider for clip skip. So if I were to generate this particular prompt with my settings at clip skip one, I am using a particular seed so that we can see the variance. And I'm using this model, I think it's pronounced Lyriel. So let's take a look at the image here. Kind of has a bluish tone. The hands are pretty decent, but yeah, I really like the image. Let's change this to clip skip two and generate another image. And this is the image with clip skip two. It adheres to the prompt a lot more since the focus is the Night King from Game of Thrones. The other one didn't really have the look of the Night King. So let's talk about how this works. So first and foremost, if we look at this definition here, Clip is a very advanced neural network that transforms your prompt text into a numerical representation. Now, I don't know about you, but reading that makes it go whew over my head. I'm a visual learner, so I did a bit of digging. I give full credit to a fellow creator. His channel is Koi Boy, I believe. I'll leave a link to the video in the description below of all the references and his video. And the reason why I really liked his video was because he gave me a visual representation of what all of this means. Now I'm not going to go too in depth, but I'm going to give it a shot. Okay. So as you know, the most basic form of stable diffusion is text to image, inputting text to create an image, right? And that process is pretty straightforward. So normally what we do, we put in a text prompt in stable diffusion. It calls up the information from a huge data set. It then takes all the information and breaks it up into a bunch of noise, really. And then it recreates your final image, which we see here. So let's call that basic conditioning. Or if we think of control net, uploading an image for a certain pose or certain depth is another way to condition the output of your image. Do you follow so far? So the actual model clip is another conditioning method. So let's break it down to its simplest form. Clip as the model is a text encoder that's embedded into a specific model. Let's say realistic vision as an example. So from the prompt, it goes through the text encoder model, which is known as clip, and it creates an embedding. At this point, don't worry about the embedding. All you need to know it's information that's been converted to numbers. If we want to break down how the clip model actually works, we can follow the flow here. So here's our prompt once again. It'll bring that information into something that's called a tokenizer, and it basically turns the text into numbers. Then it converts those numbers into a tokenized text. It brings it into what's called a transformer layer to create a preliminary embedding. This repeats for 12 steps. Now I didn't list all 12 steps here, and then you get your final embedding. So what is clip skip? All it is really is that you're telling this process to stop before the last layer. So let's assume this is the last layer here and this is the last embedding. This would represent clip skip one. It's kind of weird. You got to think backwards. 
So when you see those suggestions on realistic vision, for example, to use clip skip two, basically what you're doing with the clip model is you're ignoring this last step and this layer and this embedding would represent clip skip two. Now previously before when we looked at the workflow we only had the prompt going straight into stable diffusion and going through that whole process. But now we've added this condition with specific instruction and specific training on how to produce that image. And as a result of that as we go through the process Theoretically, we come out with a better image. Not always, but that's usually most the case if that particular model was trained with clip. Now I think if I show you visually what this all looks like, it'll make a lot more sense. So remember, as I said, let's think backwards and the whole process has 12 layers. This is clip skip 12, 11, and 10 very far off from the prompt that we want, but it has some of the elements. I used words like the Night King from Game of Thrones, sitting on a throne of swords, torchlight in a castle, that type of thing. It's not very coherent, but we're gonna get somewhere. As we look at layers nine, eight, and seven, now at least we have some sort of king. We are getting some sort of light, not necessarily torch lights. And here, this looks more like a chair than a throne. This one's starting to look like a throne, but even more so here on step seven. So we see the image slowly coming together. On layers six, five, and four, now we really start to see it take some shape. Still doesn't look like the Night King, but we have the throne. We do get the impression he's in a castle. We don't have our torch lights, which is fine. So these final layers would represent clip skip three, two, and one. It's kind of obvious clip skip two gives us the best results based on the prompt that I used. One still looks great, but it's not exactly what I wanted. Now I can't tell you why that is, all I know is the whole clip process is 12 layers. You might be thinking, why didn't they just make it 11? Back in the early days, not all these models could use clip. Think of it like a backend hack. What tends to happen, especially when you have a lot of details in prompts, it might in a sense overdo it or overfit the final image. And because the process is 12 steps, it's going to keep going until it reaches that 12 step. Now here's the thing that people don't understand. Clip skip isn't supposed to be used past two, maybe three, if you want a loose interpretation, or maybe you just want some sort of variation of your original prompt. And when it comes down to it, it really is a minor optimization to your prompt. In my case with these images, it worked great but I've also had situations where I was working with our particular model and using clip skip two didn't really yield better results. So I hope that answers your question, Jose, and anyone else that was wondering what the heck clip skip is. And if you happen to be new to automatic 1111 and you want to install it, make sure to check out this video. But until then, I'll see you when I see you.